أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Muslim scholars have divided the soul of the individual into three categories. And this is because the Quran, the book of Allah, has mentioned three types of souls, three types of nafs. The first nafs that's mentioned in the Quran is the nafs that is labeled as the nafs al ammara. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٌ This is the part of the soul that constantly pushes us to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the part of the soul that constantly asks us to follow and worship our desires just like the animals putting the logic aside, putting faith aside, putting intellect aside, and following the desires. And it is ammara. It's not only asking us to disobey Allah once. It is constantly. It never stops asking us to follow our desires. And then there's another soul, and this is labeled as the nafs al لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة. This is the part of us that tells us to go back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala after we have disobeyed, after we have fell in the traps of Shaytan. This is the part of me that tells me I have done something wrong. And I must go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the regret that every single one of us feels as soon as we have done something wrong. There's a feeling. When we have done something wrong, everyone feels that regret. Some people try to cover it up. Some people try to ignore it. But this is the nafs al-lawamah. And this is the gravity that pulls me back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after I have gone astray and I, after I have disobeyed Allah. And then there is a third type of soul that is mentioned in the Quran and this is the nafs al The soul that has reached satisfaction. The soul that is satisfied with itself and satisfied with Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied with this person. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya, wadkhuli fi ibadi, fadkhuli fi ibadi, wadkhuli jannati. This is, this is the soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted. And this is the soul that it has, it is satisfied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The soul that is rest assured. In this life, the only way that we can reach security, spiritual security and spiritual satisfaction is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way that we can be content is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah, He is the one that controls the feelings in the heart and Allah is the one that will bring satisfaction to the heart. You see some people, they are millionaires. You see some tyrants, leaders, kings, presidents. They have everything under their control. They have the money, they have the wealth, they have power. Anything that anyone can wish for. But then you see that they're still not satisfied. 
Look at, for example, one of the tyrants, Saddam. Saddam, he had everything. He had tens and tens of castles and mansions and palaces. But he lived a lifestyle of fear. He was always afraid. Every time he goes out, there's a hundred cars going out with him. Every time he walks into a place, he's constantly afraid for his life. This means that he's not satisfied. He hasn't reached the state of itminan. He hasn't reached the state of satisfaction. But you look at Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, he used to walk and his servant, the one who was with him, he wasn't a servant, he was as a friend to Amir al-Mu'mineen. Qambar, he would walk behind Amir al-Mu'mineen telling him, oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid someone is going to harm you. Amir al-Mu'mineen would tell him, Oh Qambar, the day that Allah has written for me to leave this life is a day that no one can change. Bring hundreds of bodyguards. Bring armies and soldiers. Let them try to defend me. No one can. That is the day that Allah has written for me. This is the rest assured soul. This is the soul that has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only through the remembrance of Allah that the hearts will find peace. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقاموا. The ones that say, رَبُّنَ الله. And then they act upon what they say. ثُمَّ استقاموا. Then they stand for what they say. تَتَنَزَّلْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَنْ لَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ The angels will come down and comfort these people. The angels will be your source of comfort. تَتَنَزَّلْ عَلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَنْ لَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not be sad. Do not be afraid. Do not be sad for what is going on in front of you. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ And then they promised them of the ultimate reward, and that is paradise. These are the ones that have a rest-assured soul. These are the ones that have built a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I ask, and every one of us, we want to reach that level of itminan. Every single one of us, we want to reach that level of satisfaction where we are, we are worry-free in this life. We have Allah with us. If I have Allah with me, I'm not going to be worried about anyone or anything. But how do I reach that level? How do I reach that level? النفس المطمئنة. This is what the month of Ramadan teaches us. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa teaches us. This is what Amir al-Mu'mineen teaches us and the Ahl al-Bayt, they teach us through the du'as, through the supplications that are recited during the holy month of Ramadan. And my dear brothers and sisters, I've said this and I'll say it again. You go and you look all over the world, search east and west and north and south, you will never find supplications like that, of the Ahl, like that the Ahl al-Bayt have brought for us. Where can you find the dua like dua Kumail? Where can you find the dua like dua al-Sabah? Where can you find beautiful words like the dua that was just recited earlier, dua al-Iftitah? This is the legacy of the Ahl al-Bayt. This is what the Ahl al-Bayt left for us. We hold on to the Ahl al-Bayt not only because of a, it's an issue of power, an issue of khilafah after Rasulullah. No, we hold on to the Ahl al-Bayt because they help us reach spiritual satisfaction for ourselves. During this holy month, let's learn lessons from the Ahl al-Bayt. All Muslims are fasting, but it is only a few Muslims it is only a small group of Muslims that are able to benefit, benefit from their fasting. Otherwise, you'll have a person that was fasting, but he goes and he blows himself up, killing people that are prostrating to Allah on a Friday, in a masjid, in the month of Ramadan. He was fasting as well, most likely. 
You need to have spirituality. You need to reach Allah through the correct way, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought for us. And that is where we go to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. We go to the Ahlul Bayt to learn how to build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us go to the doors. Let us go to the teachings of Zayn al-Abideen alayhi as -salam. The one who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi named him Zayn al-Abideen, the adornment of the worshippers. Imam Ali ibn al Hussein. This great Imam of the Ahl al-Bayt, the son of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who teaches us how to build a relationship with Allah at a time where everyone is busy for themselves. It's either nighttime when everyone is asleep, everyone is worried about the rest, or during the hours of Sahar, during the month of Ramadan, when we are worried stuffing our stomachs so that we, so that we won't go hungry throughout the day, what do the Ahl al-Bayt teach us? What does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi teach us? Yes, take a few bites, eat. You're not going to starve out of hunger. But during those hours, make sure that you feed your soul as well. During the hours of the Sahar, that is the time that the dua is most likely to be accepted. During the times of eating. Also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says during the time of iftar, right before you eat, right before you eat, ask Allah for one of your hajats. Ask Allah for something. Say one istighfar. Because that is also a time that Allah will answer the dua. We learn from the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, that during that hour, the hour of the Sahar, to build a bond with Allah, to invest in a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mentioned in the tafsir of Surah, Surah Yusuf, after the brothers, they brought the catastrophe upon Yusuf, they came back to their father and they were repenting. They told their father, Ya'qub, oh Ya'qub, oh father, ask Allah to forgive us. So Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, he says, سَأَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ Rabbi." He says, I will ask Allah to forgive you. He doesn't do it right now, at that moment. Commentators of the Qur'an, they say that he was waiting for the moments of Sahar. He was waiting for the time of Sahar because that is the time of prayer. That is the time that you can have a relationship, an intimate relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn from Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam some of the most beautiful prayers, some of the most beautiful supplications that are recited specifically during the month of Ramadan. One of them is Dua Abu Hamza Thumali. This beautiful Dua, this beautiful language of love where the Imam alayhi salam, he teaches us how to speak to Allah from the perspective of a servant, from the perspective of a sinner, from the perspective of someone who is a deviant sinner that is going to be judged by Allah any day now. We don't know when we're going to leave this life. But have we prepared ourselves for that day? Have we prepared ourselves for the akhirah? This is what the Imam teaches us. This is what the Ahlul Bayt teach us. To get up in the middle of the night and remember Allah and build a bond with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the ones that stand in the middle of the night. The ones that stand in the middle of the night to have a conversation with Allah. Allah says in the Quran, تَتَجَافَى جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Their bodies are lifted from the bed in the middle of the night. You know, there are some, sleep cannot come to them. Sleep cannot come to them. Why? Because this is the time that your lover is waiting for you. This is the time that Allah is waiting for you. Who is going to speak to Allah during that moment? During those moments? Who is going to cherish those moments and have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is 
what the dua of Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salam teach us, teaches us. One third of the month of Ramadan has passed, my dear brothers and sisters. One third of this holy month has passed. Let us take advantage of what is remaining from this month. In this beautiful dua, we are taught how to have a conversation with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is welcoming. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to us. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ When my ibad, when my servants ask about me, let them know that I am close and I answer whoever calls upon me. And this dua, the imam teaches us how to have a conversation with Allah. Many of us, we want to have a conversation. Many of us, we want to have a dialogue with Allah. But we don't know what to say. We don't know what to ask for. We don't know how to ask. The imams, they teach us how to have a conversation with Allah. In one part of the dua, the imam says, Ilahi bidhikrika asha qalbi wa bimunajatika barrattu alam al khawfi anni. He says, Oh Allah, it's through your remembrance that my heart survives. And through the munajat, through the whispering prayers with Allah, I have cooled down the pain in my heart. I have cooled down the suffering that I witness all around me every day. When you talk to Allah, you will feel comfortable. When you have a conversation with Allah, even if you're poor, even if you're suffering from diseases, even if you're suffering from health, financial issues, if you have Allah, what else do you need? What else do you need if you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he used to say, رُكْعَةٌ لِي فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَا فِيهَا he would say that one rak'ah in this lower life is better than heaven and what it offers. Because if you have Allah, what is heaven? If I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then heaven is nothing. If someone builds a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Amir al Mu'mineen. So here in this dua, Imam Zain al Abideen alayhi salam, he teaches us a few factors in building a relationship with Allah. He begins the dua, dua Abu Hamza Thumali, by, ad, by admitting who he is and who Allah is. Many of us, we want to have a relationship with Allah, but I treat Allah as a co-worker. When I ask Allah, if he does not answer me, I come and I get upset and I yell and I say, Allah doesn't listen to me and I'm going to leave. We don't treat Allah as if he is our master. And we are the servants, we are the slaves. But the Imam reminds us who we are when we begin a conversation with Allah. Ilahi la tu adibni bi uqubatik, wala tamkur bi fi hilatik, min ayna li al khayru ya rabbi, wala yujadu illa min andik. Wa min ayna li al najat, wala tustata'u illa bik. He says, O oh Allah, do not. Punish me, do not discipline me through your punishments, through your torture. Who else do I have other than you, O oh Allah? Who else can save me from the afterlife? Who else can save me? Who should I turn to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Imam teaches me to acknowledge who I am and who Allah is. Because the moment I acknowledge who I am, I will be able to have a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Imam, of course there's many lessons, every sentence, every page, every word, there are many lessons that we can learn from this dua. I'm just pointing out a few of these factors. Another factor of this dua is that the Imam focuses on the problem, a problem that we all have, and that is a problem that we continue falling into sin. Why do I continue falling into sin? Why am I like an animal following my desires? I have no self-control. 
My desires control me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me an intellect, gave me intellect. But I let that aside and I am following my desires. I'm going after this dunya. The Imam says, why? Why is it that we continue following, falling into sin? Why is it that we cannot build a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahumma inni kullama qultu qad tahayyatu wa ta'abbatu wa qumtu lissalati bayna yadayka wa najaytuk alqayta alayya nuasan idha ana sallayt wasalabtani munajatika idha ana najayt mali kullama qultu qad saluhat sarirati وقد قرب من مجالس التوابين مجلسي عرضت لي بلية أزالت قدمي. He says, why is it, O oh Allah, that every time I make an intention to build a relationship with you, I make an intention, I decide that tonight I'm going to pray Salat al-Layl. I decide that tonight I'm not going to disobey. Tonight I'm going to do good. Tonight I'm going to do something that brings me closer to Allah. But then something comes in the way and brings me away. I slip, I fall, I crumble, and I cannot stand in front of those desires. The Imam replies. He says, Sayyidi la'allaka an babika taradtani. Oh my master, maybe it is because you have kicked me out of your doors. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shuts the doors in front of our face, that's it. There's no, there's no hidayah. وعن خدمتك نحيتني أو لعلك رأيتني مستخفا بحقك فأقصيتني أو لعلك رأيتني معرضا عنك فقليتني أو لعلك وجدتني في مقام الكاذبين فرفضتني. The Imam points out a few reasons. Why we cannot build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first, لَعَلَّكَ عَنْ بَابِكَ تَرَتَّنِي Oh Allah, maybe you have kicked me out of your doors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not kick us out of His mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets just to guide me. Just to bring us to the right path. Why would Allah shut the door in front of my face? Allah shuts the door because we shut the door. Allah does not answer me because I have shut the door. I, I don't want to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe it's because of my sins that are on my shoulders that stop me from building a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, Maybe I do not go the extra mile. I say I only do the wajib. I don't want to go extra. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want to go to the masjid, listen to dua kumail, dua al-iftitah. I don't want to have any relationship. I'll just do whatever I have to. Because of that, my dua is not getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells me there's no need to force a relationship with Allah. You don't want to have a relationship with Allah, there's no need for force. You stay where you are, and Allah is where He is. And then He says, أَوْ لَعَلَّكَ رَأَيْتَنِي غَيْرَ شَاكِرٍ لِنَعَمَائِكَ فَحَرَمْتَنِي Maybe I do not take the time to appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. Every breath that we take is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything around us is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we taken the time to thank Allah and appreciate? Have we appreciated people around us and society around us? Allah says in the Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If you thank Allah, Allah will give you more. And if you do kufr and do not thank, do not appreciate, then also the punishment is severe. أو لعلك فقدتني من مجالس العلماء فخذلتني أو لعلك رأيتني آلف مجالس البطالين فبيني وبينهم خليتني. He says, 
العلماء. I don't like to sit with the ulama. I don't like to sit with a scholar. Not any scholar. A scholar is someone who reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A scholar is anyone. Anyone could be a scholar. But this is someone who reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe your parents can be scholars. Maybe your grandparents. Maybe a friend. Someone who reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I like to hang out in the majalis, in the sessions that are wasting my time. Sit and talk about politics, talk about the economy, talk about the weather, talk about social networks, talk about everything. But as soon as the conversation becomes about Allah, you see some people, they get up and they leave. They don't want to talk about Allah. I don't want to have a conversation about Allah. I want to sit and talk in a conversation. I'll talk for hours and hours. I'll give my input and I'll be willing to listen for hours about anything else. As soon as it becomes a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I get up and I leave. Because I don't want to have a relationship with Allah. I don't want to be reminded of my sins. I don't want to be reminded of my obligations. These are the majalis al-battalim. They asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he tells the Muslims, اجتنبوا majalis al mauta Stay away from the sessions of the dead. No one literally sits with dead and socializes with dead people. We all run away from dead people. So they asked Rasulullah, who are the dead? Rasulullah tells them, كُلُّ غَنِيًّ مُتْرَفْ Everyone who is so rich that all they think about is this life. Now you have some rich people, they're very good, they're very close to Allah, they're constantly donating, they're constantly giving for good causes. They use their money to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then there are some that just want their money to bring them away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah says, stay away from that type of session. So this is one factor. Another factor that the Imam points out in the dua is that we have to admit our sins. The only way we can go through this obstacle, the only way that we can build a relationship with Allah, the only way that we can get closer to Allah is after we have admitted our sins. After we admit that we are guilty. But in my view, I'm not a sinner. Everyone else is a sinner, but I'm not a sinner. This is why we refuse. Some of us, we refuse to repent. Some of us, we keep delaying the repentance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change a group of people or a person until they decide on changing themselves. And the only way that I can change myself is once I have admitted. Once I have admitted of my faults and my mistakes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no shame in admitting your sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is all seeing. Because Allah is all hearing. Yes, it's makruh. It's not, it's not good to tell your sins to other people. Because no one else can help me get rid of my sins. But tell your sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Imam, he points out to this factor, Ilahi ana al-qalilu al-ladhi kathartah, wa al-mustadhafu al-ladhi nasartah, wa ana al-taridu al-ladhi awaytah, ana ya rabbi al-ladhi lam astahyika fi al-khala'a, wa lam uraqibka fi al-mala'a, أنا صاحب الدواه العظمى أنا الذي على سيده اجترى أنا الذي عصيت جبار السماء. The Imam says, Oh Allah, I am the small that you raised. 
I am the nothing that you made something. I am the one that couldn't walk, you helped me. I am the one that no one knew about me in the womb of my mother, but you continued to send blessings and sustenance for me in a time where no one knew about me, not even my own mother. You kept giving me, you kept giving me, but what did I do? I kept disobeying. I am the one who had the audacity to disobey the creator of the universe, the creator of the skies and the solar system. Out of all of the creation of Allah, all of the creation, everything that you look around you is a creation of Allah. All of the creation of Allah does not disobey Allah. Everything goes in one pattern. The solar system, the DNA, the genes, the animals, they don't disobey Allah. They do what they're ordered to do. But the only one that has the audacity to disobey Allah is me, the human. We are the only ones that disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now, what's the solution? فَقَدْ عَصَيْتُكَ وَخَالَفْتُكَ بِجُهْدِي فالآن من عذابك من يستنقذني ومن أيدي الخصماء غدا من يخلصني وبحبل من أتصل إن أنت قطعت حبلك عني The problem is that this life is going to finish one day The problem is that we don't even know when that day is going to be The problem is that I've continued to live a lifestyle of disobedience but one day I'm going to leave this life. Who's going to help me? Who's going to be there for me? And this is why the Imam, the Imam, he starts begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Begging Allah for forgiveness because there's no way out. Today, in this life, maybe I could be the biggest criminal, but I can go, if I have money, I can go and bring a lawyer and he could take me out of jail. Look at the white collar criminals. They go and they steal so much money. They destroy lives of millions of people, CEOs of companies. And then they come and they live. Everything is fine. If they end up going to prison, they go in a very nice place that there's, there's no punishment, nothing. But with Allah, can we escape? There is no escape from the government of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the Imam, right now, before we go in the afterlife, right now, we have to beg Allah for mercy. Ilahi, law qarantani bil asfad, wa manaatani saybaka min bayn al ashhad, wa dalalta ala fadaihi ayoon al ibad, wa amarta bi ila al nar, wa hulta bayni wa bayn al akhyar, ma qatatu rajai min. وما خرج حبك من قلبي أنا لا أنسى أياديك عندي وسترك علي في دار الدنيا. He says, Oh Allah, if you were to punish me, if you were to hold me in the chains on the day of judgment, during those hours, during those moments, I would say I have a Lord, and that is Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Because who else can I call upon other than Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Imam, he teaches us how to build a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, in the dua, the Imam reminds us of something that we all try to stay away from. We all try to ignore. And that is death. That is leaving this life. You know, there are some people, they drive by cemeteries they turn around, they don't even look at the cemetery because they don't want to be reminded of that home that is being prepared for them. That home that is the true home that every single one of us is bound to be in. Our true home is the afterlife. This life, it finishes. Within a blink of an eye, this life will finish, it will be gone. But what, we, what have we done for the afterlife. وَانْقُلْنِي إِلَىٰ دَرَجَةِ التَّوْبَةِ إِلَيْكِ وَأَعِنِّي بِالْبُكَاءِ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِي فَقَدْ أَفْنَيْتُ بِالتَّسْوِيفِ وَالْآمَالْ عُمْرِي 
He says, oh Allah, I'm asking you to help me build a relationship that brings me closer to you. Because I have lived a life of taswif and amal. Taswif means that I say, sofa astaghfir. I will do istighfar tomorrow. I will do istighfar next year. I will go to hajj this coming season. This season comes, I end up not going to hajj. This Laylatul Qadr, I'm going to repent. Laylatul Qadr came and I was bu busy thinking of something else. This is taswif. And the other thing is amal, having hope. We constantly have hope that we're going to live tomorrow. Who knows I'm, if I'm going to live tomorrow? Just two days ago, the explosion in Kuwait. These people, they went to the masjid, they took a shower, ghusl al -jum'a. They went, they were praying. Who would have thought that there would have been an explosion while people are praying in their sujood? Today, yesterday, they were buried. Some of them in Karbala, some of them in Najaf, and others in Kuwait. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who, how, do we, how can I guarantee that I can live for another hour? This is why the Imam teaches, teaches us to repent. And the only way that we can repent is through shedding tears. Yes, there's no shame in crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no shame in shedding tears in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mali la abki. Wala adri ila ma yakunu masiri. Wa ara nafsi tukhadi'uni wa ayyami tukhatiluni. Wa qad khafaqat anda raksi ajnihatul mawt. Mali la abki. Abki li khuruji nafsi. Abki li zulmati qabri. Abki li ziqi lahdi. He says, I cry. I cry for the moment that I leave this life. That my soul is snatched out of my body. I cry for that home that I have not prepared for myself. I cry for the tightness of my grave. I cry for the afterlife. My time is over, but we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our du'as during this holy month of Ramadan, during what is remaining from this holy month of Ramadan. One third of this month has passed. There's two thirds left. Let us take advantage of it. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala ahli baytihi tayyibin al-tahirin.